Welcome. I'm Kevin Roberts, President of the Heritage Foundation, my friend and Vice President of Domestic Policy at Heritage, Roger Severino. Roger, let's cut straight to it. What a big day. Glorious day. We had six votes to uphold the 15-week protection for unborn life and five votes to overrule Roe v. Wade. It is now dead and buried. Can you believe years. that we're saying that? Yes, 50 years of struggle. And this is a moment of victory for life. So, no, a lot of people watching are curious to hear you because of your legal expertise, analyze the high points of the Alito opinion. Well, it's very similar to the leaked opinion. So we had a very good sense of what it was going to be like. And it is fantastic. It is a masterpiece of constitutional jurisprudence. Uh, President Trump had put constitutionalists on the court and they delivered. There is no right under the Constitution to an abortion. Plain and simple. They made it absolutely clear it was made up. It was a figment of the imagination of the left. And they called them out on it finally. And they were honest. And they said, it is now time to tell the truth about the matter. Um, there is no right to abortion in the Constitution. The Constitution has no support for it. And now our elected representatives could step forward to defend human life. That was the bottom line of the decision. And it walked through the entire history of abortion in America, uh, how to properly understand the Constitution where rights come from. And it was a masterpiece that should be taught in, in grade schools, right? This is a new day in American history uh, and a, a victory for the Constitution. So unlike some other opinions that have been written by, quote unquote, our side, that are spurious, that you don't necessarily want to teach in law school, this is one just on its own merits in terms of the, the law, the philosophy, the logic, that it sounds like you're giving it an A+. Plus. I am. I am indeed. It was everything just about, just about everything the pro-life movement has ever wanted from the Supreme Court. Let the people allow us to protect unborn, innocent human life. Right. And so I want to talk to you in a minute about impact and where we go from here, because in addition to the, the story, obviously, the, the, which is the decision, the story now is what happens with pro-life movement, what's going to happen state by state. But I know a lot of people are curious about what the chief justice decided to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe it's too strong a word. Correct me if, if I'm being too strong, but it seems like he's once again himself tried to dance on the head of a pen. Thankfully, it, it didn't matter regarding the outcome of the mm -hmm. decision. But given your legal expertise, tell us what he decided to do. Sure. It, it, he never fails to disappoint conservatives. <laughs> it's just time and again, when he's presented with following the Constitution or making a political decision, he, he's going on the political side in uh, too many cases. Not every case. He's good on some cases, but too many cases the politics override. <clears throat> he said that, okay, the viability line, which was the core of, of Roe and, and Casey, is gone. And he replaced it with a new one, a reasonable opportunity for a woman to get an abortion. I don't know where he got that from. He just invented another standard. But he did say he's going to leave for another day whether or not to overturn Roe. Well, that day's here. Roe is gone now. So is he now going to respect Star Decisis as the new president, as the new precedent? Because this is now the law of the land. Roe is gone. Dobbs is is where we are now. He lost. You know, he wanted to go bit by bit and keep his options open. There are no more options. Life won, and that's a beautiful thing. And and one issue that which now, given the decision being out, almost seems like an aside, but I know some people watching this will be curious. What happens with the leak? I mean, will, will there ever be any justice served to the clerk I, who, I who committed so. that? Uh, we presume it's a clerk. We presume it's a liberal mm -hmm. clerk because they had their interests in trying to torpedo the decision. And it, it was a frightening moment in American history because of the leak and because of the outrageous attacks on the left. We had an attempted assassination of a Supreme Court justice before the decision was out precisely to try to change the outcome, right? Talk about an attack on our democracy. Mm -hmm. That was real. That person was arrested for an attempted assassination when President Biden is nearly silent about it. Where is Attorney General Garland on this? This is outrageous. But now the decision is out. Hopefully that threat will go down. It, unfortunately, the left is a lot of folks are crazy on the left. It's not going to go away. They need better security. Um, and the leak, I think, is secondary to all of that. Right. But the leak kicked it off. And I don't know if that's going to be able to be put back in the bottle, the genie back in the bottle. Will we have leaks in the future or future decisions? It, it's hard to go back. But I do hope the leaker is, is caught and uh, given whatever punishment is available. Yeah. And, and 
before we move on to what we're going to do in the States and, and where you and our colleagues have been active, colleagues here at Heritage and colleagues across the pro-life movement, I'm curious if you might make a prediction on how serious the left's verbal assaults on the court and the integrity of the court will be. Namely, if we fast forward to the fall and think about a potential lame duck session where presumably the Democrats might be out of power, that they've got an opportunity to assail the court verbally, uh, politically, hopefully Mm -hmm. just that. Do you think that's a real threat? Uh, If they believe in self-preservation and politically, (laughs) they wouldn't do it. But they've been pushing the idea of packing the courts for all this time. And FDR tried it. It blew up in his face. If if the majority, current majority tries it now, it would blow up in their face as well. Yeah. I think the American people don't want the court politicized. Uh, Roe v. Wade was a political decision. Dobbs is restoring the Constitution over politics. And now we get to actually fight in the political sphere. We had so many members of Congress mm-hmm. who have run on pro-life platforms. Right. I mean, elected on pro-life platforms. President Biden used to be pro-life, right? Now it's their time to step forward, our elected representatives, to say, now we have the ability to defend life. It's and it's their obligation to do so. Now let's talk about where we go from here. And uh, we focused our conversation thus far on the legal side of this. But as you have just said, this is now a political issue. And it's an issue that is going to be borne out in a couple of lanes. One of them, every state capital. But then also Washington, D.C. We'll come to that in a minute. But tell us what we're doing across the pro-life movement, including Heritage, to actively be involved at the state level regarding the impact of the Dobbs decision. Um, Out of the gate, a fair number of states, about a dozen, already have laws that are protective of human life. Mm -hmm. We saw what Texas did, uh, your home state, and and moving forward in, in pushing so hard to defend unborn life, even when Roe was in place. That's gone. Yeah. So all these laws that protected unborn life before Roe, spring back into life. States that had passed conditional laws where predicting that Roe would fall, those spring into life. And then now legislatures that haven't passed laws defending life, it's their opportunity to, to step forward. Some states like California and New York are going in the exact opposite direction. Mm-hmm. They are doubling down on the Roe model. They are saying that unborn life is is not uh, valued. And in that state, it's open season. And they want to subsidize abortions from people coming from other states yeah. to states like California. It's, it's this ideology that they have that is destructive of human life. And they don't even want to respect the, the laws in other states. They want to export abortion. So that's going to be a, a major problem coming forward because not every state is going to be protective of life. With that in mind, it seems to underscore the necessity of the federal government, of Congress taking action. Walk us through the reasoning that supports that claim as well as what that political fight might look like. So, And you mentioned what is Heritage doing. And Heritage and Heritage Action are very active in states, working on things like model legislation. Uh, American Society for Life has been fantastic on model legislation, ADF, other groups. We're we're collaborating with the movement, uh, making sure that the proper responses are there, that protect unborn life and support the mothers and the fathers Mm -hmm. in these states, right? Because it's it's crucially important that it's a holistic view. um, And that's what we're doing at the federal level. Now, the federal government has an absolute role in this. There cannot be now two Americas. One America where unborn life is protected and another where unborn life is treated as the equivalent of medical waste. Yeah. Right. That is untenable. Which is not an overstatement. That's how it's treated. That's how it's treated. And we went through this with the civil rights struggle. We, we suffered with two Americas for far too long, and it took the Civil Rights Act to, to for Congress stepping forward and saying enough is enough, and there's a role to play here. Justice Kavanaugh in his concurrence said that there's a role for state and Congress, it was very specific in saying, and Congress to finally settle these questions. This has to be settled nationally. Uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. We can't have two classes of Americans. So Congress has to step forward and protect them more life. So loud and clear, Heritage Foundation, Roger Severino, Heritage Action, many pro-life leaders in this country demand federal action. This is the time for that to happen. Last question, Roger Severino. Over the next days, the commentary, especially on some news channels, will descend from legal analysis Mm -hmm. into being dominated by what is going to be some pretty ugly rhetoric and hopefully just that, nothing physical by the other side. How about we offer some proportion as we wrap this up and take a step back from what we know is going to happen. It's already starting just a few blocks away. And this is the question. Where does this decision rank in American legal history? At the top. 
Number one. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah, because it. Re- I don't disagree. It, it it restores the fundamental importance of the American institution, which starts with protecting life. It comes the our whole vision of liberty started with protecting life in the Declaration of Independence, yeah. our God given right to life, and there's nothing above that. So this is restoring the constitutional order. So I'd rank this at the top of Supreme Court decisions. So we had Plessy versus Ferguson, we had mm-hmm. Brown versus Board. These great decisions there are great because they recognize the inherent dignity of the human person yeah and this does that par excellence well roger severino thanks for taking some time out of a busy day i know it's going to be a busy several days but for that matter to your point it's gonna be a busy a busy several years and you're leading the charge for us at heritage grateful that you're here and you're doing that and to all of you who have tuned in hopefully taken not just solace in this decision but great enthusiasm and great joy We need to celebrate wins. And as Roger said, this is the biggest of the wins. Take care.